In April this year, I helped lead a DTS outreach team to northern India, to the hill station of Kalimpong in the Himalayas, into the state of Sikkim, and also to a city called Chilong in the northeastern part of India. Our general days would consist of a few days spent in the town itself, and then we would go trekking up and down the mountainside, visiting different villages, to encourage local believers and also speaking with Hindus and Buddhists that we came across. The area itself is really mixed religiously. There's a strongish Christian influence, but it's also really big for Hindus and Buddhists. Now, four days into our arrival, in India, an earthquake shook Nepal, and we felt that in our region. Right before the earthquake hit, we were on a cliff face, praying um, over the area. It was a cliff face where, which is known for a lot of suicides, and we'd been there, and we were meant to continue on to another cliff face, but we ended up going back in a taxi to, because we had a different ministry um, opportunity that we had to go to. And I put this down to God's provision because the cliff face itself was hard to reach and through a lot of sheer drops and steep inclines that would have put the team in a bad position if we'd been there during the earthquake. The shaking continued over the next couple of days and over the course of the next month to the point that it just kind of became a part of everyday life. And your first instinct and reaction to this is to fear, particularly looking at the environment we were in Nothing is flat there, and everything's on an incline and just like up and down. All the houses and roads are just built into the sides of the mountain. And I just remember thinking that if like a major quake struck, there'd be nowhere to go that's safe. Um, yeah, through all this, God was teaching me not to fear, but to trust in Him first and foremost. Reading the Psalms became a real source of strength for me. Yeah, there were times when I felt completely emotionally gone, and yet I had responsibility in ministry and for the rest of the team. And there were times when I felt like I had nothing left to give. But in 2 Corinthians, Paul says, For when I am weak, then I am strong. And in those times, I definitely felt God show up completely. There were times when I just felt completely out and yet I had to pray for someone or give a prophetic word or minister to the team and in those times God showed up I think more powerfully than when I was just in my normal strength and did far and beyond what I could do on my own. One of the students who'd had a major revelation of the love of Christ gave an altar call and we saw almost an entire Hindu village raise their hands and accept Christ. Midway through our time in Kalimpong, we had a Hindu festival set up up the hill from us, and they would blare Hindu praises and worship from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day for nine days. And so towards the end of this one day, me and two of the trainees walked up to take a look at the festival and to see what was going on and a local man invited us to sit down and ask questions and explain it to us. And this turned into a conversation with the high priest, a local mayor and some higher politicians in the area in which one of our trainees was able to give his testimony and share the gospel to them. There's so many more stories of what God has been up to in this region and in the lives of the trainees. I think overall when we put our trust in God, he shows up and proves that he is who he says he is. It's so often we see this in our challenges and when things are bumpy or we're in sticky situations. But in all this, God will knit you closer to him and show that he is who he says he is.